And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. It is a season for your fantasy hockey goalie to get injured, and luckily we got a great guest for you today. Brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. It's time for another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice, Week 11 Mailbag Edition. Nick Alberga, Anna Dua, and Bob Bender? Huh? Oh, God. What a lineup we have today. And neither of us are the special guests, but you know what? Still is true that Skip is the official delivery app of the NHL. And now I welcome in, against my will, producer Bob Winter. Oh, baby. Filling in for Petey Jensen. He's a little late, so I will fill in admirably. Okay, if you're up in Canada, go use Skip during the holiday season. And our special guest, I'm so honored to bring this man in from NHL.com, one of the greats, the goalie master during the holiday season, Davey Satriano. How are you, pal? Davey's good. I'm always the goalie master all year round. So, you know, you don't have to get me on the show. You can always reach out if you have any any goalie questions. I know we got tons of them today and this week especially. Well, Davey, I got plenty, and we'll, we'll jump right into it. I want to get to DJ Smith. Trust me, I got some opinions on that Ottawa Senators situation, but we have to talk about the crease, man. Like Detroit... Ville Husso and Alex Lyon are out. I think James Reimer is the automatically the next man up. Vegas is crease. Like Yuri Patera, I guess, is their number one goaltender. Where do you want to start, Davey? Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, Vegas since you just mentioned them. You know, last year they had four goalies that got their name on the Stanley Cup, which is kind of unheard of. They all played a part. But you're right, this year they've had – a bunch of injuries. I don't think Hills is as serious as, you know, they said day to day, although he had missed time previously. And when you're injured in the first game, you come back. It is concerning. Thompson's proven that, you know, he's he's capable there. I know you like Pater- Patera. Patera, is that how we're saying it? Close enough. Yeah. Um, but I think Thompson, if you're, this is what I said in the beginning of the season, I stick to it. Like Vegas is one of those teams, kind of like Carolina for me, where if you have one, you kind of need the tandem if you're going to, in a regular season, you're going to need the tandem. You can't go with just one because injuries, poor play, like anything can happen and they could be on their third goal. You can still be getting them wins, but it's kind of tough when you don't know who's playing, you know, day in, day out. Davey, when you're in this kind of situation where you know literally nothing about the guy who's going to be starting in net for the team, what do you look at in terms of the team if you want to take a chance on that guy? Because we saw JoJo, as Pete liked to call him, tear it up for the Lightning at the beginning of the season. And we see that happen sometimes, but other times the team just is not strong enough to support whoever's in net, right? Yeah, you're exactly right there. See, I feel like Vegas is a team where it doesn't really matter who they throw in. Like, there's a good chance they'll put up pretty good numbers, definitely more than likely the wins because hey he can allow three goals and they can still win but for me it's a little different when you look at a team like you know Carolina where they got they got Nick they got our guy coach coach right now I mean um but if they bring in the guy from the ECHL or Aaron Dell like who knows what's gonna turn up there and Anna is a huge caniac I know <laughs> look the, the Hurricanes are obviously you know they're not as they're struggling on like last year to me they're allowing like the, the fact that they're allowing so many goals is concerning so I don't know how some of those goalies might do coming in but uh I think the first thing you have to look at is the offense in front of them because if a team can score that can kind of mask a lot of you know problems on on defense or on these these goalies who are coming in just to have to get you know coming in hot before I let Nick continue to dig deep into your brain, Davey, I just have to take a second because it took me a moment to process what Davey Satriano just said, where he just called Kochekov his and Nick's guy. And I am so incredibly offended. I don't know if I've been like this targeted on this podcast ever since I've been on it. I'm like shocked. Okay. Well, first of all, I've liked this guy since probably before you were born. I'm not going to lie. Like I have cards of him <laughs> on my desk. So, you know, big fan. I got his rookie cards. Bob, I got his Young Guns card. You know, I don't, we're not sure how much that's worth, but hopefully someday. But, uh, you know, I just sit at home. I'm just relaxing. And every other night I get a text from Nick and he's like, who should I start? And, you know, he's always asking me about Vasilevsky or Kochekov. And I'm like, do you really even have to ask me? I mean, you know who we're rolling with. So, so yeah, big fan. Always been a big fan. Dave, I was just going to piggyback off that. Are there some goalies you've been streaming as of late? Because that's a thing. Like, these guys are going down. Do you have much faith in, like, a, a James Reimer? Or we talked about Patera. Isaiah Seville has been called up to back up Patera. Like, we're into the deep, deep strengths right now of, uh, you know, the fantasy hockey goaltending mind. Like, is there anybody out there you've been you've been rolling with lately? 
I've been rolling with, I, I did pick up Batera, but also I'm not sure how, you know, available he is right now, but I was rolling with Martin Jones just because I'm like, look, uh, the guy, he, he does this pretty much every time that he signs with a new team. Like he starts off really well. And then we realize he's Martin Jones, but playing on the Leafs. So if they have continue to have the issues with wall, Sam sort of like he, to me, he's a guy, but um, as far as who else is out there, as you just mentioned, Every week, it seems like a team is on their third goaltender. So, like, in next week, we could be talking about Michael Hutchinson for Detroit, right? They're 1-6-1 and one or something in their last eight games. Like, they haven't done much, especially since Kane is there. And now that they have two goalies injured, and, you know, who knows? I don't really like James Reimer that much. Um, I had him in the beginning of the season. But to me, I'm like, he, he'll start. But I feel like Detroit could might, you know, infuse your Maple Leafs legend H Hutchinson and get him in there and we'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah, it's very tricky right now if you don't have, you know, a, a, a tandem, like a, a healthy tandem, because the wire is kind of like, as you mentioned, like I look and I'm like, do I really trust any of these guys? Like, it's, it's really, it's really not, not what we want for the holiday, holiday season. Despite his performance against the Ottawa Senators, I feel like before that game, since we're talking about waiver wire and goalies to pick up, perhaps the waiver wire MVP of this season could have been Connor Ingram for the Coyotes, right? And he had like mm -hmm. one off night, but before that, he's been kind of ridiculously consistent. Are you worried, Dave, that he falls off again? Or do you think he like established himself enough that you want to keep Connor Ingram on your roster? It's actually funny that you asked this question because we didn't talk about this before, but I have a really deep league that I have four Four, 14 teams, I have four goalies, and I need to drop one. And I was, it was between Ingram and Jacob Markstrom. And I'm like, they're two, you know, they're big names. But so I ended up dropping Jacob Markstrom just because I feel like Ingram, the, I like the trajectory of the Coyotes better. I know you do because you picked them to make the playoffs. I don't know if you've mentioned that before on this podcast, but Never. if not, I will, I will shout, it, shout you out again. So um, I like, yeah, he has, you know, after that, hot stretch he kind of dipped in play a little bit but i i feel like um he is you know their guy as long as he stays healthy for the rest of the season so he's a guy that i'm i'm going to continue to roll with and i said i dropped markstrom i know he came back and had that one good good game so far but that was kind of a tricky one for me to choose in between those guys but i do like ingram i like the coyotes so that's where i where i, where I lean right now Davey, I want to weave this into the whole Ottawa Senators situation. So uh, DJ Smith was canned. Jacques Martin, 71 years of age now, the interim tag. And I guess he's the uh, oldest coach in the league behind, obviously, or in front, I should say, Rick Bonus in Winnipeg has been doing some great stuff. But from a fantasy perspective, is there anything you can you know uncover from this situation? Like automatically you would think a defensive dynamo Martin comes in, maybe a Corpusalo, maybe a Forsberg. But that team can't play a lick of defense, and we saw it in Arizona the first game too. I know you're a big component of you know the usually the coaches come in and they'll the bump they have, but I don't really I've never been like huge on that. But the thing with me for Ottawa was early on I'm looking at their the standings, like they're in last place in the East. But if you look at the amount of games they've played, they've played like six or seven fewer games than like the two leading wildcard teams. And I brought this up to our NHL.com pal Dan Rosen yesterday, and he said to me, I said, you know, if they win five of their games in hand, you know, like they're right there or something. He's like, You clearly haven't watched the Senators because they just have no defense, like they just can't and I said, well, maybe I haven't seen many of their games, but I wasn't worried at first. But then after he said that, and I kind of look at some of the, the stats, it kind of concerning, like you're right about Martin, but that was also Jock Martin, but like that was also like 20 years ago or something. So <laughs> NHL's yeah. changed. So we kind of got to see what, what he brings, but I am kind of worried. Like I wouldn't trust their defensemen, their goalies. I know, you know, you, you still have, for some reason, I guess you're still hanging on to Corpus Allo. I don't know if you're planning on, you know, I, uh, dumping him dumping him like a food cake after christmas or boxing day but uh <laughs> that's a that's a tricky one right there so it is yeah i love that you threw out a shout out to boxing day look at davy satriano so cultured, cultured. Yes. But now I'm going to ask you about a team, and I know Pete Jensen is going to be screaming when he hears this because it's his favorite little trigger word. The Buffalo Sabres and the Ottawa Senators, we always talk about them together right now. And before the season started, those were two of the best teams to stack in Fantasy Davey. But the way it's been going, Ottawa's offense numbers still actually look pretty solid. Buffalo, I don't know what's going on there, as Nick would say. They're looking like kind of frauds right now. So if you had to choose between one of those teams to stack players in Fantasy, who would it be? Uh, I would probably go with... 
you said Ottawa and Buffalo, right? Yeah. I'd probably choose Ottawa and Buffalo. I did, you know, last year, I think they were the only or one of like two or three teams that had like five 20 goal scores or something like, and four of them had 30. But this year, it's just like nothing's really gone right. I mean, even guys, you know, Jack Quinn obviously just came back, but like Benson, we thought, oh, this guy could be a rookie of the year contender. And it's just like nothing's really been going right for them. I feel like on any given night, like, you know, Dylan Colson's could get a hat trick and then he could not score for 20 games. Like Thompson's finally back now, but they really, to me, it's like, I don't really know. I don't have much faith in them. I feel like it's more of like a throwing darts kind of thing, but Ottawa, I think they've just been, you know, more consistent offensively. They have players that I would, you know, I mean, like Stutzel to little Chuck, even I would even give Tarasenko a little bit of a like, oh, you know, I'll throw him in every now and then. But I feel like if I had to choose between those teams, especially in like a daily fantasy, I would choose pretty much the Senators offensive guys there. Look, the love fest was absolutely sickening, not just on this podcast, but in the hockey world for Detroit, Ottawa, Buffalo. I don't want to say I told you so, but I, I, I told you so. It's Fraud City up and down the board. Detroit, you can throw into that conversation. David, does any one of these teams make the Stanley Cup playoffs? I'm putting you on the spot right now. I think I probably had all of them to make, or two or three before the season Good began. Job. But right now, yeah. yes, it's okay. But then again, I mean, <laughs> no, one, no one really had the Panthers or anything. Definitely not the Coyotes. No one that I know had the Coyotes. True. Whoa. But, uh, Whoa. but <laughs> I, I thought I, we were friends, Dave. God. I, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten a Christmas card yet. So I'm just oh. saying. I don't, I don't I mean, you know. But uh, right now, you're looking at it like, I don't really, because early on, I thought, you know, the Flyers will drop out, like the, the Panthers. But it doesn't seem like either of those teams is going anywhere and then you also have some hard charging teams like i still think tampa can make it the devils are right there so i'm sorry detroit and buffalo and ottawa it's going to be another long winter with uh, or spring with no playoffs for you there was so much time spent on too buffalo too and much ottawa who's gonna <laughs> jump in and make the playoffs in the east and now we look at it and i think davey uses the right term here with consistency the sabers are all over the map. I cannot get a beat on them at all. It's the, the last thing you want in fantasy is inconsistency. And that's what I'm seeing with that team night in and night out. I have no idea what I'm getting from that Sabres team. So even though the the Senators have, have struggled here, and yes, they've played less games, they made the coaching change, I think the Senators just have a little bit more consistency than the Sabres next. And I think it's up and up and down the board. Like even, for example, the Boston Bruins, who are an elite team, send you, sending Matthew Patra to the World Juniors, and then Zach Benson's like, like, nah, we're keeping the guy. We need him on our roster. I think it just speaks to the uh, urgency from both sides of the spectrum. And tell you now, if the Buffalo Sabres get another coach fired, this could be like 52 coaches in the last like 10 years. It's it's actually d- d- disturbing what's happening with that team where it's like every year we expect them to take a, a step and and they're not. And, and Davey, I'm sure you can allude to this too. Like they've just rushed their goalies along, man. Like I didn't need to see Devin Levi like, I think it's great to see Spencer Knight right now in, in Florida in the AHL. Like, I, there's there's no such thing as having these guys in the AHL too long, right? I, I actually really do agree with you there. I, I thought Buffalo, every year they're trying to get, a, you know, they're trying to develop someone. And you mentioned they kind of rushed them along a little bit. Like, to me, I think, you know, obviously when they trade for Levi, like, he's going to be the guy. But there's nothing wrong with UPL when he's played or he kind of developed well. Like I'm thinking, Oh, you know, this guy will start and Levi eventually would take over or something like that. But you made a good point about Spencer Knight there. Like let him get his head straight, let him, pl- let him play. Cause he hasn't played in a while mm-hmm. and we know what he's capable of. Um, but especially with Buffalo, you're hundred percent right. Like they don't, ha- they need a goalie there. They need to develop, let someone develop. And then eventually that's the, their problem. That's why they haven't made the playoffs because it's been, they don't have a goalie. Davey, uh, delivered by good friends over at skip. And I think you make a great assessment there. And this is awesome. Cause you're wearing the uh, Christmas sweater. What to do with Timo Meyer has been a question on this mailbag edition for the last uh, seven weeks. So how would you answer that being a devil's fan? Um, hold on. Let me look at my watch here. Timo time <laughs> is over. Oh, wow. It's over. You're dropping? It's, You're done? I would probably try to trade him. And then if I couldn't, I would probably just, just drop him. He is, you know, I like, he's been hurt. And even though he's playing, he's playing hurt. And the kind of game that he plays, like, he can't really he's very he's physical and stuff too he takes hits he lays out hits and we saw how he injured like in the playoffs he really wasn't a factor because he got hurt a lot but I love what he brings but even coach Lindy Ruff was like look he's he's not something's wrong but they're still having him in the lineup so 
I'm not going to have a guy that's, you know, scored what four or five goals so far. I mean, he's, he's, he's like a producing Ovechkin numbers right now. I mean, <laughs> my time filling in for PD Jensen is over because this is a rare occurrence, by the way, where he's late to a program about 15 minutes late. But I said to him, you know what? You jump in when you're ready. It's the Christmas edition. It's the holiday season. So we have PD Jensen back on and he's brought to you by skip the official <laughs> delivered <laughs> you can order pete on the skip app. thank you Petey. how are yeah. you buddy doing great yeah we got everybody on this show right dasher dancer prancer vixen comic oh. cupid donner blitzen and rudolph too so what's up davey man great to see you buddy everything's going well happy holidays and we're just you know we're just into the goalies and a lot of other stuff going on right now <laughs> Pete, we're talking about the uh, the Devils. Uh, Timo Meyer, we had a question delivered by Skip about him. We, we've answered that so many times. Why don't we piggyback off that? We were in a text chain uh, on Wednesday night regarding Alex Ovechkin. I guess he's not getting the record now. Like it's it's pretty crazy. I kept I keep betting on this guy to score a goal. It's just not happening for him. We ran a poll on the fantasy Instagram account, and one of the options was 19 or fewer goals. And he's going to have to do quite a bit just to make up the ground to get to a number like 19 or 20. I still think he's going to do it. But yeah, I think it's maybe more important, generally speaking, that the Capitals are playing good hockey, right? Like that they beat a team of the Islanders caliber despite scoring so few goals. Like they're in the playoff hunt, which is something none of us ever would have seen coming. So that's something that is maybe like, I, I know Matthew Kachuk was saying the same type of thing. His numbers are down, but he's like the team's winning. The team's backing up what they did last year. And like, To some of these guys that are win first, like that's more important. I was saying too, I was thinking that exact sentiment where I thought the Washington Capitals this season were going to be like Alex Ovechkin's chase for the goal record and everything else. And the rest of the team just was not going to matter. And the roles are kind of reversed. And you do wonder with a guy like that who has so much pedigree and has so much experience is it just going to flip the switch one day and everyone's going to regret Davey letting go of this guy? Because when I'm looking at his shot volume, he has more shots on goal this year than Zach Hyman, who's almost at 20, Kyle Connor, who's almost at 20 goals. And it's just like the list goes on and on and on in terms of he's overshooting pretty much most of the league. He just cannot find the back of the net. You have to imagine that that bad luck ends eventually, right? Yeah, you have to imagine that. And to me, the fact that Pete said that the Capitals are playing well, like, He's not putting going to put all this pressure on himself. I got to be the guy to get them out. Earlier in the season when they were like one and six and scored like nine goals in seven games, okay, maybe. But you know what? I know he has five goals in 28 games, whatever it is, but the last time he scored a goal was against Columbus this season. They're playing Columbus tonight. Maybe he gets back on track. Uh, by tonight, I mean Thursday, of course. Uh, yes. He might get back on track. Pete, that's an interesting poll question, but I think I'm like there's no way this guy is scoring under 20 goals. He can go on a run. He can score four in a game or something like that. But to yep. me, um, I'll, I'll say this, Anna. I, he's one of those players that, like, he's earned the right for me. Like, he's not droppable like because he can turn on any time, like you said. I kind of look at him like uh, in football, you know, Drew Brees was like my guy. I'm like, I can never drop this guy. He's just done so much for me. He's done so much for us in the fantasy world. Like Ovechkin, you you would probably regret that soon after you after you dropped him is my feeling. So I, I'm definitely hanging on to him. What a sweetheart, Drew Brees. And uh, I'm right there with you. I am buying. I am buying on Alex Ovechkin. Okay. The resume has been long enough where I think this guy's going to start to cook. You, me- you mentioned his shooting percentage is around like 5% right now. No way that's sustainable. Uh, delivered by our good friends again over at Skip. We'll tie this in. Got some questions about Max Pacioretty. Is he the uh, the magic lick maybe to that uh, Caps power play? Would you would you buy on him? Would you pick him up, Davey? Uh, I actually would pick him up. I've stashed him on IR in one of my leagues. I, I'm kind of I thought he would be out a little longer than this, but um, he's what is he like a six seven time like thirty goal score or something? I know he's had the injuries the last couple of years, but even last year with the Hurricanes, right? Didn't he score like two goals in, in two three games or something before hurt. the injury? Yeah. I think he's still. Um, I still think he's very capable of putting up numbers. You mentioned their power play. I mean, it's just very strange what's been going on there. You might as you know throw him out there and see what happens. But Pacioretty, me definitely the first few games he plays. If I'm in like DFS or something, I'm, he's a guy that I'm I'm picking up, and he probably won't even be you know cost that much right away. So I'm liking Pacioretty. 
We're talking a lot about buying. I want to ask a question about selling that came in from our friends over at Skip. And I'm surprised we haven't brought this up because we've mentioned this anecdote, Davey, many a times on this podcast without you being here. Someone asked if they should trade Brock Besser or ride him out. And as we know, and as we've discussed, you woke up in the wee hours of the morning early this season to pick up Brock Besser. And you were ahead of the chase on everyone. Nick kind of made fun of you. I don't know if you listened to that episode yeah. of the podcast, but it looks like you're winning right now. Dave, I did initially chirp you, but I will say a couple of weeks back, I did apologize to you on this podcast. So it was good of you to stay up till 3 a.m. to pick up Brock Besser. And that's the formal apology. You don't get that from Nick often, Davey. So you take that and you run with it, baby. Hold on to that close. <laughs> that that means a lot to me. You know, I, I, I wanted to actually draft him and I was unable to. Oh, and then okay. in two of my leagues, and then I was like, you know what? He's out here. The Canucks were playing that night at like, you know, the game ended at 1.30. I had to wait till like 3 a.m. to pick him up. I was like, look, four goals. I like him. He's He can get 30 this season. Let's see. And so far, you're right. Did I think the Canucks were going to be this good? No, I don't think anyone did. But so far, I think, you know, I know you'd probably want, like me to say, oh, I should, you know, he's a good sell candidate, but he, uh, he's hanging on. I'm hanging on to him the rest of the he's He's going to win a championship with me this season. Oh, wow. Put it that way. Okay. Whoa. Oh. I don't know if you guys got to this question yet, but uh, there was a sell high, buy low offer. One side was Kreider and Ovechkin. The other side was Debrinkit. As good as Debrink it's been, like I'd probably take the other side of that coin. And like even if Ovi doesn't turn it around, he'll still get you the baseline category coverage. And then Kreider, like you can bank on him to always deliver as part of that Rangers offense. I feel like he's really become a sure thing over the past three or four seasons. So I would lean towards that Kreider Ovi side. What do you think? You know, I can't really do that eyebrow raise thing, but I would have done it when you were like Debrink at four. I'm like he had a hot start. His the team is struggling now. He even has a Patrick Kane there, and and then you're like Chris Kreider, the guy does everything. He plays on the power play, shorthanded. He scores. He's in front of the net. He hits, and then oh well, sprinkle in Alex Ovechkin, who, as Anna mentioned, shot volumes there. Like he's gonna turn it on. He's got um, the the hits too. Like I don't really think there's much of a question there. The only question would be yeah. that that one for two trade. It's like you'd probably have to drop someone. So that would mm-hmm. be the question for me. Like who who you're dropping? But I think Debrinkat. I'm sorry. It's it's been fun, but you you got you got to go. <laughs> Wow, you're just you're cutting out. ties left and right on the podcast today, Peter. Happy holidays. Happy yeah, holidays, you missed Alex. T- you missed the Timo Meyer one earlier on. Uh, Davey's in a, a tough he's mood done. this holiday season, Pete. Well, it's tough when, like they said the other day, that he's dealing with an injury. So, like, they made that clear, right? Like, Tage Thompson's been underachieving. He's probably been dealing with an injury. There are other guys out there, right, that um, you know that they've been dealing with something. So, it, maybe the holiday break will come at a good time for those couple guys, and it's a good time to buy low on any of them uh, after the break. Dave, we got another uh, another question brewing from our friends over at Skip. Uh, Logan Thompson or Vitek Vanacek or both or neither in your world? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say neither. I'll, I'll go Thompson here. I should, probably should have worn my Golden Knights Christmas sweater, I guess, instead of this, but going to the Devils-Oilers game tonight, and if I see Vanacek, I will tell him that he's getting coal in his stocking because of oh, wow. <laughs> how these uh, Devils goalies have You're the Grinch, you know, man. <laughs> have performed this season. I actually have Schmid and I have Vanacek in two – each have them in one of my leagues. And I thought, you know, it was the playoffs last year. They got that experience. I was expecting something, you know, them to just be better this season. But they're just they're not stopping, especially Vanacek. Like, just doesn't seem like he's confident that she's not stopping shots. And Thompson, look, Hill is day-to-day. And Thompson, Cassidy even said, look, Thompson's going to play here. He's got a great offense. His numbers are really good. So, to me, it's not really much of a, you know, much of a decision. So, Vanacek, you'll join uh, Timo on the sidelines there in my in my in my roster. Davey's dressed like he has holiday spirit, guys, but he's just attacking all of these guys right before the Christmas break. And I gotta say, I feel like we should call this segment Davey's naughty list, guys, going forward because it seems like a lot of players crack that roster. He's got a lot of built up uh, negativity in that system of his. But hey, Davey, I wanted to ask you since you watch every Devils game, whether you're in the building or you're at home watching on MSG, I got to get your opinion. They brought in this girl. I don't know who she is. She's on the pregame desk, this panel thing she does. I think her name might be Anna Dua, actually. How do you think she's doing on those MSG broadcasts? And don't you think since she's come on board, the Devils have kind of declined a little bit, Davey? <laughs> 
Look, I, all I'm going to say is I usually don't watch the intermissions, but you know, <laughs> when, I, when I found out a certain someone was going to be on, I, I, I didn't change the channel. I had it on. And information she provide, that's been provided is, has been, been solid. But I do agree with you. Since they brought her on, the Devils at home have lost to the Blue Jackets, the Ducks, the Sharks. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, just, some, that's just something's up there. Note, note that all wagerers, all right? So, Until Anadu is yanked off the Anadua, panel, we're not touching the Devils. We're not please, touching them. Please stay away from the game tonight since I'll be there. And in the future, if you just don't ever want to go, go to MSG. How about that? Can <laughs> you cover some away. major games? <laughs> Guys, I'm in Buffalo tonight. So if the Sabres okay. beat the Maple Leafs, this curse officially is going to be counted as eliminated. I love it. Davey's like uh, Mr. Scrooge today, right? You get coal, you get coal, leave my office here. Dave, thanks so much for joining us, buddy. We appreciate it. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, buddy. Merry Christmas. Happy Boxing Day. Enjoy all your, all your holiday festivities. And I'll be more cheery if, uh, you know, Devils uh, beat the Oilers tonight, I guess. So we'll see. The one and only Davey Satriano, guys. I want to talk a bit about the Minnesota Wild here as well. Uh, Matt Zuccarello, the Norwegian blur week to week upper body injury. Their top six looks like Kaprizov, Eriksson, Ek, Boldy, Felino, Rossi, Hartman. Petey, this team's 8-3-0 and under John Hines so far. They've been pretty good. Uh, I would lean towards uh, trying to pick up Ryan Hartman. I know he's been relatively quiet lately, Anna, but that's a guy that checks a lot of boxes in the category coverage. And like with some of these other guys that you might be flailing to pick up and they might cool off within a week, like Hartman has a good chance of remaining relevant for the rest of the season, whether he's playing center or on the wing. Yeah, he's one of those guys, especially when you have these type of injuries, that he goes on streaks. We saw it happen last season as well. So DFS or streaming for a short amount of time, he's the best internal replacement you could probably find. I got some names to bring to the table here. Matty Duchesne, step up. 29 games, 10 goals, 17 assists, 27 points, on pace for 76 points, and way out there right there in uh, fantasy hockey. So pick him up. Michael Granlin, of course, Bob's boy. Uh, Blake Coleman, a seven-game point streak with Calgary. And uh, Kirill Marchenko, six goals in the past seven. So thankfully, there's plenty of options out there. I want to touch briefly as well on uh, Winnipeg's top line, guys, have been on absolute fire. The last five games since Kyle Connor went down, they've combined for 25 points. And uh, these guys are for real. Ehlers, Shifley, Velarde here, the top line. Yeah, before the season started, we were talking about who could be like the biggest offseason mover and could pay out a lot. And Velarde was at the top of the list because people didn't really look at Winnipeg's side and that trade that happened. And you're seeing it now, like it's working out for this team and it goes to show how much depth they have. I didn't have them making the postseason. And this is my formal apology for that, because even right now, without their best player and their best goal scorer, when you look at their top six forward group, that's a team no one wants to play against. Oh, no doubt about that. And I'll tell you this, guys. Um, I know who's delivered the most for me in fantasy hockey this week. It is time for the Delivery of the Week, uh, brought to you by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. I'll go first since I have it right now. Nikolai Ehlers, Pete, your boy. The last five games, four goals, five assists, nine points. We just talked about it. That top line in general has been absolute fuego for Winnipeg. Who do you have, Pete? I have Igor Chinakov from oh, the Columbus oh. Blue Jackets. I mean, that guy has been an absolute <laughs> oh, stud. Five-game point streak with nine points in the span. He's playing with Marchenko, who just absolutely obliterated the Sabres the other day single-handedly, and that line has been trending up for like two or three weeks now. So uh, get to know those names. I'm going to reclaim this player as one of my boys since apparently I don't talk about him enough. And that's Pyotr Kachekov as my delivery of the week, guys. He has no losses, three wins, one OT loss in his past four games. Nine, four, six save percentage in that span. Music to my ears. Although it was 6-1 against Vegas, somehow turned into 6-3. But that's how Kochekov goes sometimes. That's your deliveries of the week brought to you by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Pete, Andrei Svechnikov back in the Canes lineup here. Yeah, it's a guy that, I mean, they were saying it was another one of those guys I was mentioning, like Thompson. Like, he hasn't been healthy. They're even saying that right now. He hasn't been 100% from the jump. He missed the start. But it, all it takes is one game for a player like that, And I know you've been high on him in the past. One goal, four shots, a dynamic force in many facets of the game that could really be a game changer for the Hurricanes um, immediately and long term for their Stanley Cup futures and stuff. Yeah, guys, he's not having a bad season. Like, I'm so over this narrative, too, where, <laughs> yeah, he didn't score goals 
I know that that is not happening and we're used to seeing him score goals, but he has 12 points in 17 games. Like he's been putting up assists night after night, even when he wasn't feeling his best or just coming back from his ACL injury, four shots on goal, five shots on goal, six shots on goal, hits coverage, like across the board, he's having a tremendous season. He's just played 17 games. So I feel like a lot of people are just overlooking the production he has had already. And while we're on the Hurricanes, I'll just say this. Um, Last time we spoke, I think I was upset with their Western Canadian road trip. I did not get turned off with the Hurricanes. I went right back to the well. They blew out Vegas the other night. I'm on them again tonight. I like Carolina against Pittsburgh. And the other play I'll give you is Dallas over Vancouver. I know the price is a little higher than you'd, you'd, you'd think. I think I think Vancouver is going to get some some Joes taking them, but I'm a pro and I'll be on the Dallas Stars this evening, Nick. There's a couple things I like. I like a couple overs, uh, the Leafs and Sabres overs. That's five straight overs that those two teams have hit together. Uh, again, neither team can play a lick of defense. And uh, New Jersey and Edmonton, Pete, I, I think I'm expecting a lot of offense in that game because Davey's going to be there. No, I could see that. And back to Dallas, I mean, I think Thomas Harley's starting to make an impact here. A couple shows ago, Stephen Ellis, the prospects guru, was mentioning him. He's up to eight goals this year, and he's tied with Kale McCarr for the most goals per game among all defensemen this season. So really impressive for him. He's on that second power play with Duchesne and Wyatt Johnston and Tyler Sagan and Mason Marchment. Like, that's got to be one of the best PP2s in the entire league. So... Uh, Don't overlook a player like that. No doubt about that, guys. Uh, Lastly, I just want to say happy holidays. Merry Christmas. It's been a a fun ride. And uh, what else we got cooking, producer Bob Bender? We got one more up uh, up, uh, for the the year or what? Listen, Christmas is Monday here in the United States and across the world. Wednesday Um, in Canada. So I think we're doing a program. uh, I think we're doing a program next week, next Thursday, I think is what we discussed. And then um, we'll have the Winter Classic and we'll catch up with you in 2024. In 2024, we won't be a bore. How about that? There's our new slogan for this podcast. So week 12 mailbag edition, the final edition of 2023. Many thanks to Davey Satriano for dropping by all our great guests in the first half of this season. Thanks to producer Bob Banner for sticking with us. And for Pete Jensen and Anna Dua, I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice, delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.